That's awesome. That's great. Okay, let's watch the the Ukrainian uh, military. Hi. That makes sense. Chat, I just oh. got back from Hello, Spare Parts, Parts Army. Army. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. And in today's episode, I want to know if the Russian invasion is as much of a cluster as it appears, or are we seeing skewed sources? We're going to analyze if the financial sanctions by NATO are an effective punishment or a blind, gleeful march towards World War III. And we'll answer the question all of us are pondering real hard on. Can Putin actually hope to win this war? This guy's actually done a pretty decent job so far of analyzing it, like way better than fucking other Western sources, if I'm being honest, if I'm being, uh, you know, in real right now. So I don't mind uh, watching his stuff. What I do mind is you seeing the ads at the top of the hour, of course, because at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, or if you're lucky, you can get gifted a sub, but here's the one minute ad break now. Ben? First, we need to look at the Russian assault from the north. We now have video footage compiled from 3D images of that 40 mile long Russian main effort convoy coming from Belarus in the north down to Kiev. The media has yeah, insisted yeah, time and time again that this convoy has stalled and jammed up simply because it didn't just cruise straight into Kiev, blasting tattoo on their loudspeakers, shooting everything in sight. Even if- Okay, my respect for this dude grows, despite him being a little bit more tactical. Um, too tactical for my liking, specifically because of the Tatu mention. Tatu was one of the first music videos. All the things she said uh, was one of the first music videos I ever jerked off to. Fun fact. Let's continue. If that was the case, and the combo. Also, yes, they're not real lesbians. They were queer baiting. Actually, one of them is like literally homophobic, but I don't care is completely deadlined and it might very well be it would be insane to expect them to drive straight into kiev after driving for two days straight with no rest they aren't some kind of advanced russian robot trucks they're driven by people the russian army would first need to set up a casualty collection point and a forward operating base outside of kiev before even attempting an assault on the capital but of course the media thinks it's as simple as driving right up to kiev with no preparation and to be fair it's a reasonable assumption on their part after seeing the Russians failed the attempt to enter the city the first time, right? And I can certainly understand people saying you need to take that jerk back. That will never, I will never take it back. Okay. I don't even feel the slightest bit of guilt or shame for cranking it to that. Okay. Just straight up. I will never take it back. I will never unjerk. I will never unjerk that jerk and I will never, never feel shame for that. Oof and why people think this convoy has stalled because there are credible reports of fuel supplies running low, soldier morale decreasing, and evidence of Russian vehicles being destroyed and breaking down or abandoned. For example, take a look at this open source intelligence website that has worked to independently verify and confirm all photographic proof of knocked out vehicles on both sides. We can see Russia has lost a whopping 851 vehicles, while Ukraine only lost 248, confirmed knocked out vehicles. But I believe the evidence on the ground also supports the case that what we're really seeing right now is the Russians setting up their headquarters at a safe standoff distance north of Kiev for sustained combat prolonged operations. For instance, take a look at the official report from the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense who stated that the Russian forces were spotted just a few days ago on March 5th setting up field logistic camps or forward operating bases around the west of Kiev. We can see on the live conflict map where those red tent icons are located at the cities of Bordankia, Katsukia, and Gavrash have all become military base locations from which they state the Russian army is launching probing attacks against Kiev. These bases are where the Russian army plans to bring their wounded soldiers and damaged vehicles during their eventual assault on Kiev. Lieutenant General Sheri Sheptala, the general of staff in charge of the Ukrainian armed forces, said, quote, in the area of Ivankiv, Russian occupiers are deploying a field site for army aircraft. There's also video proof to support this. 
from Ukrainian citizens who uploaded footage of Russian attack helicopters escorting their armored columns near Kiev now. This was an SOP or standard operating procedure for our troop movements in Iraq to protect against any attacks on our supply convoys. It seems like Russia is using tactics learned from watching past US military operations, yet somehow I'm not in the least bit flattered. Ukrainian general staff Sheptala reported that there are 18 enemy Russian bombs just like in Halo. What do you forward operating bases is just what every military uses the fuck Italian tactical groups in that convoy attempting to advance along Kiev's western flank. There's a total of 3,600 infantry, 180 even said, tanks, as in Halo? and 400 armored infantry transport vehicles in that movement. There is evidence to support that the Russians are having a lot of difficulty advancing to the west here. The Ukrainian armed forces are making the Russians pay for every single inch that they advance. Russia has had limited success in these attempts. They're now within distance of the main supply routes to start setting up control points on the roads leading into Kiev. The goal is to prevent shipments of supplies and weapons from NATO that are reaching the- One of the fobs is in the radiation exclusions, uh, exclusion zone of Chernobyl. You, you saved me from the Jordan Peterson I wonder why they decided the- to, I mean, I guess it's wide open space. Won't that literally fucking uh, cause radiation uh, uh, poisoning potentially on, on troops though? Because all the dust that I they like- and my internet is out. All the dust that they literally like fucking uh, resettle by walking around. It's definitely fucking, it's definitely safe. It's safer than most other places. Um, it's a good way to not get it bombed. Not just increase cancer risk like smoking. It's a super, super uh, safe space to fucking ensure that your forward operating base does not get One touched. Year. It's almost time for that smile. With a direct line into Kiev, too. They cleared most of the radioactive topsoil. Didn't they literally fucking increase radioactive? Uh, they, they, like radio, uh, uh, the, the, what do you call it? The fucking... The radiation uh, levels were noticeably increased when you saw troops moving through the the area, though, right? You're, ta you're talking several years down the road with regards to radiation and cancer for Russian soldiers. That was bullshit. I don't I don't see that being bullshit. You can, dude, if you have, if you were, if you walk through that fucking soil um uh, over and over again and you drive fucking tanks through it and shit you're like digging deep into the fucking ground uh that area is not didn't you debunk it yourself on stream no that was a diff that was a power plant that was an active nuclear power plant that's the one i debunked the one i'm talking about is the original increase in radiation levels that were minor but the radi but the increase in radiation levels that were minor was because they were moving through chernobyl and when you were um in months fog they never touched the Red Forest. It's still extremely radioactive. Do a charity for Russia? <laughs> yeah, dude. The resistance. I know they're gonna use these tactics because these are the same tactics that we used against Iraq. The fact of the matter is that as of Monday afternoon, March 7th, there are still three smaller outskirt cities between Kiev and the Russian convoy that would need to be secured first before they can even think about safely driving that convoy further south down towards Kiev. It's not all doom and gloom. We have this footage of the Ukrainian military striking back with artillery fire on a Russian base just north of Kiev at Kavarachi. It remains to be seen if the recently crippled Russian economy and the dwindling supplies will be able to support this assault through to the end. And we'll get into the repercussions of the sanctions, which Putin calls an act of war. Oh my God. XQ Cow Lounge says, well, politics is war and in war, Truth is the first casualty. What is going on with the juicers, dude? 
Yo! Juicers are fucking losing it, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Later in the video. At this point, you might be one of those what people is that are calling for a no-fly zone over Ukraine. You might think that's the only way to help them. But make sure you're not under any illusion as to what exactly you're asking for with that. That is World War. Juicers coming to the Hasanabi broadcast for a week because they, they jumped ship when he was watching Jubilee videos and they're just like fucking spitting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Juicers are like, oh, Jubilee refugee. And then first, first chat, oh, I'm a Jubilee refugee. Then like a week later, they're saying that. <laughs> Nearly two years of great content. Keep Why did you just ever hate boner for you? It's so fucking weird. They don't. I mean, there are some. It's a massive community and uh, a community that has all manner of different politics. War three and fine. Maybe it's unavoidable if Putin continues past Ukraine. It's like 50 -50. So be it. But until that no, happens, everyone literally does hate you. Those is banned from XQC. What the fuck do you know? You've been banned from XQC. Wait. There's all kinds of little freaks in the XUC community, okay? Little shitters who uh, yell at uh, Felix every time as well whenever he, like, has a, a normal political perspective or has, like, a woke take. And they're just like, oh, why are you saying this? I Thanks hate this. Screaming. Please stop. Putin hasn't crossed the red line drawn by NATO. Putin clearly has a ton of respect for our red lines. Something I, for one, have no respect for is the Russian army's lack Happy of maintenance. There is video evidence to support the idea that the entire Russian military is facing dry rot problems on their tires, which leads to these tires deflating and the vehicles getting stuck in the mud. This makes me suspicious that maybe the money sent to the Russian military generals that was meant for upgrading their vehicles has instead gone directly into their pockets. Yes, thank you so much for these rubles, Putin. I will definitely spend them on maintenance for my entire brigade. Two hours later. Woo! Party in Moscow! And if that were the case, it would be ironic because that's exactly the kind of corruption that Putin himself was accused of committing while he was in the KGB stationed at St. Petersburg in the 1990s. You know, back before he destroyed any chance of Russia having a democracy. Now, it might seem strange to you that all these trucks and tanks are getting stuck in the mud. Aren't these soldiers trained on how to drive in Moscow? But it's actually easier than you might think to miscalculate if a dirt road is capable of handling your armored vehicle. In Iraq, a lot of dirt roads that we drove over were tricky. Sure, I could drive my 2008 Toyota Camry over it, no problem, but a 30-ton armored vehicle gets stuck. Okay, dude, homie has a 2008 Toyota Camry. Respect. My respect is growing. My respect is growing right now, okay? Two years. In the same Let's dirt road, bog. like quicksand. One time we also ended up getting second squad's armored vehicles stuck in the mud trying to recover us with their tow cables, so you can see how quickly the whole thing becomes a shit show. So what's stopping us from confirming any of these reports about what's happening in Kiev? Heavy cloud cover over northern Ukraine started on March 2nd, and this made it impossible for us to view more live satellite image updates of the Russian convoy. Weather reports indicate that we can expect cloud cover to dissolve by Thursday, March 10th. So when do I think this next phase of the assault will start? Well, if the Russian military's actions in past wars like Chechnya in 1994 and George- Start talking about your ex, babe. First of all, I still drive it. I drove it on Monday. One year. Thanks, Hassan. Fuck you mean? In 2008, are any indication then we can expect artillery shelling and air raids for a week or two before infantry will attempt a second assault. Ukrainian regular infantrymen are quoted as saying, do it, you won't. But what's happening on the other southernmost axis of advance? And how be, might I'm that scared. progress there affect the defense of the capital? Using our open source military intelligence map, we can see that in southern Ukraine, near Crimea, where the Russians are advancing from, it's a more dry and arid landscape. 
so it's been easier for Russian troops to make mad gains there without getting stuck in the mud. On Thursday, March 3rd, the Russian forces launched an assault on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with over 100 armored vehicles, so that's several battalion tactical groups. We see video footage of Ukrainian civilians attempting to blockade the streets leading up to the power plant. These groups were dispersed with warning shots and concussion grenades by the advancing Russian military. By securing the power plant, it gives the Russians the strategic ability to add additional pressure on the Ukrainian armed forces by being able to turn off the electricity. It's like my old squad leader used to always say, Cappy, don't play war near the nuclear power plant. Now, there are several theories surrounding the battle Chat that was waged way. here. One I is that Putin ordered artillery strikes on or near the power plant as a kind of implicit threat to, to all of Europe. In this scenario, he's trying to tell us that he's super serial about his threat to drop nukes. Lovely. The other possibility is that it was an incompetent local Russian artillery commander who was too busy indiscriminately shelling everything to bother to check if he was yeeting rounds near a nuclear power plant. Truthfully, neither of those options are very comforting. The third scenario is that the artillery shelling wasn't actually happening anywhere near the power plant and the media just got carried away with hysterics. But we can actually go one step further to try to confirm these reports. We can see from this video that was posted, it claims to be near the power plant. Now you see the church in the foreground. That's a good visual point of reference for us to start confirming this report. So by searching satellite images and looking for religious buildings in the area of Anardogar, Ukraine, where the power plant is, we can easily confirm and identify the exact location where this video was taken. It's within five kilometers distance from the power plant. So the reports sound accurate. In the city of Maripol, it's 220 kilometers to the east from the power plant's location, this is where one of the most important pitched battles of the war is currently underway. 16. Now a pitched battle means a campaign that's been planned way ahead of time and takes place at a strategically important location. Basically, not some random skirmish where you and your boys run into the enemy randomly. Elements of the Russian advance from the south in Crimea and from their advance in the east Donbass region are starting to link up with each other to encircle the strategically important town of Maripol. Careful you don't touch cannon tips. The reason this city is so vital to both sides is because it's home to the Ukrainian key steel and iron production plants. It's a port city where Russia could easily drop off reinforcements from their troop carrier ships that have so far been waiting in the Sea of Azov. Lieutenant General Sheptala, the Ukrainian general staff in charge of the army, launched a counterattack and was able to destroy a few Russian vehicles outside of the city. But so far, this has been yet to prevent the Russian advance. We now know that the early reports of an amphibious assault in the country were false. It's logical to assume that the Russians will conduct an amphibious landing once the ground forces have already secured these ports. An empathetic leftist. The fuck? Fine. Yo, dude, are you okay? Why are you like donating $3 donos over and over again? What the fuck? What is happening, dude? Bro, stop. Holy shit. Crazy. Oh, one second. I got to look at this real quick. Dude, no, this is like, hold on, I gotta fucking, I gotta ban this dude. Yeah, no, it is, it is like what you're saying in the chat, straight up. He made a, he made a specific, he made a specific account just to like, he made a new email just to fucking like, don't know. Saying that he's, uh, unwell.
Oop, IP ban. Good help, brother. Port cities. And the reason for this is a contested beach landing is chaos, and it would mean higher casualties for a vulnerable landing force on a difficult beach terrain. The other key seaport in the country is 400 kilometers to the west at the city of Odessa. There is video footage of Ukrainian armed forces setting up metal tank barriers all along the city, so they've dug in and they're ready to contest any amphibious landing attempt. In order to take the city of Odessa, the Russian advancing from Crimea towards the west have captured the first major city in the country called Kherson. They were able to capture it three or four days ago on March 3rd. Ukraine sent out intelligence telegram reports that the people should not believe any news broadcasts coming from their public TV station there because it is now in the hands of the occupying Russian forces. This is the totally legit Ukrainian broadcast system. Just wanted to let everyone know, comrades, good time to lay down your arms and uh, surrender to us. I mean, surrender to the Russian army. Some of those guys, they seem like nice guys, you know. The Russian army continued 55 kilometers north to the city of Makalov, where they've been met with stronger resistance, which has stopped them and prevented them from reaching Odessa. There is video from this region of a Russian attack helicopter being shot down by a Ukrainian man pad launched just outside the city of Makalov. We're gonna see the Russian military. Like when they fucking, when, I mean, I didn't know if they were gonna show anything else, but, um, no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. That that you can watch. It's just it, it doesn't have fucking um as long as it doesn't show like the actual casualties, but um like what what are the what do what do people think? Uh what do people think like where where do people think the man pads come from? You think like Ukraine made man pads? Like, you think that's where it came from? Like, you think that that is just, you know, NATO countries. That's where it's coming from. That's what it is. Okay, let's continue. Adapt all of their techniques for how they're doing this war. They're going to get more brutal in the face of these failures. On March 4th, there is video evidence of a Russian army static artillery platoon being destroyed there. According to the live conflict map, a Russian supply convoy was ambushed 25 kilometers north of the city, and they were destroyed by Ukraine. This was a strategy used against the United States in Iraq all of the time. Insurgents knew that supply trucks were what is called a soft target. The Russian army has clearly been increasing the tempo of air and artillery strikes. This is a red flag that should cause alarm bells for anyone who's even slightly familiar with the recent history of how Russian army approaches warfare. History often repeats itself with the same amount of originality it's found in a Hollywood sequel. In many ways, this invasion reminds me of their first- Bro, this dude literally rips on the fucking Iraq invasion regularly. It's kind of interesting to see. Or- or- his comparisons to Iraq, I, I don't think he's like a fan of, of of what he did in Iraq, it seems like. First invasion of Chechnya in 1994. The Russian army assaulted from three different directions, expecting these convoys to quickly take the capital. In that war, there were also untrained conscripts who were first sent in and met more resistance than they expected at the Chechen capital of Grozny. They then bombed the city of Grozny into rubble. I believe that it looks like the Russian army learned from at least one mistake from the Chechen war. They've refrained from committing any large amount of armored convoys into invading any city just yet. Video evidence shows that the Russian army has mostly sent in light infantry in recon missions. We've seen that they've made a lot of use of those light Tiger Jeeps on these initial movements into the city. This is a new approach that we haven't seen from past Russian invasions. The Russian truck drivers are trying to improvise already. We saw photos of them ghetto rigging wooden logs nailed to the front of their vehicles as a form of medieval armor, but to be fair, you'd be surprised. Dog, what the fuck? Dude, they need to learn. Maybe this is why they need the Syrians to come to fucking Ukraine. This is like, this is, this is the absolute fucking worst, dude. Holy shit. The absolute worst, dude. The average, 
The average fucking Arab, okay, can whip together. The average Arab can whip together a fucking a better defense system than this in literally under five minutes, dude. He's wrong. That's for crossing muddy roads. What do you mean? That's for getting unstuck, not armor. I how backwards the U.S. military can be, too. I remember my armored striker and I the wooden logs are for the bridges on the back of the trucks, not armor or something. It's to make it easier to drive over. Truck, all I see is a tree. In Iraq, we had to stack piles of sandbags under our feet in the back of the vehicles because there was barely any armor underneath the old version of the vehicle. How pathetic is it to be sitting in a $2 million vehicle, but our best defense was free dirt stuffed into two cent burlap sacks. To me, this is evidence that every military sucks. It's just about which military sucks the least. Moving 400 kilometers to the north in Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv, the Russians have been attempting to level large portions of the city with artillery attack. That's because their fucking armored personnel carriers did not have, uh, it did not have armor underneath it and improvised explosive devices would make fucking short uh would make short work of an entire fucking armored you know ieds yeah ieds would just fucking rip them he didn't mention the ieds he just said like there was no armor underneath it but similar to the strategy used in their past battles in chechnya look at that every single one of those red markers is an artillery or airstrike the Ukrainian general staff, Lieutenant General Sheptala, reported a large concentration of Russian forces setting up headquarters and regrouping on the west side of the city. But they've already destroyed some armored vehicles from there. Russia has not yet initiated any new large-scale ground attacks on any city as of Monday, March 7th. We know there are 23 Russian battalion tactical groups that are making their way into position in that area. That means 4,600 infantry, 230 main battle tanks, and about 1,000 infantry fighting vehicles. While that might sound ominous for the Ukrainian armed forces stationed in the city of Kharkiv, there is the fact that the Russian army has yet to prove that they can successfully conduct large-scale... What if they're waiting for the military coverage to... I mean, uh, the, the media coverage to cool? I don't think it's uh, it's more so about the, the media coverage to cool. Was the 40-mile convoy fake? No, they're just staging. They're waiting to into a forward operating base according to task and purpose which is this video is uh, made by um and um they're building they're building supply lines along the way so they can get uh resupply set up and they're also um yeah they're also like uh trying to move in to uh a forward operating base Also cutting off in the West. I mean, what if it really is a training exercise? They seem pretty out of practice. No. Is this a Russia Today vid or are they just using Russia Today footage? No, they're using Russia Today footage because Russia Today still has a lot of fucking uh you know they still show like russian troop positions and shit like that whereas unfortunately in the united states of america and western media you never see about you never see anything from the russian side unless it's like literally a bombed out uh carcass of a fucking tank or some shit to celebrate the epic destruction footage so there's no way to there's no way to fully comprehend what the russians are doing what they are trying to do or what they have accomplished thus far. Coordinated attacks on an urban center. One of the key pieces of Russian military equipment that is operating towards this end is the 9K-720 Iskander mobile missile vehicles Kendo. operating there. We know it's launching warheads from the other side of the border from the safety of Belarus, near the town of Mazar. These massive missiles have a max range of over 500 kilometers. 
the 9K720 Mobile Russian Missile Launcher can fire at least seven Jesus different Christ. types of conventional warheads, including a cruise missile, a thermobaric fuel air explosive blast, a high explosive fragmentation warhead, and an electromagnetic pulse for anti-radar missions. They also claim to have bunker-busting munitions. It could even fire a tactical nuke if it was asked to. Resupplying those missile systems are important to the Russian military and their siege doctrine. Under the current economic sanctions levied against Russia in response to this Ukrainian invasion, they will find it increasingly difficult to repair and maintain their army in Ukraine, where they get most of their supplies and the tools for repairing their military from Germany. So this brings us to our next question. We need to address whether or not Putin can win a prolonged war in Ukraine. Now, I might not always have the right answers because these issues are complex and difficult, but I'm willing to test my theories with you in this public forum, and hopefully your scrutiny helps us update our understanding and sharpen our knowledge. Trust me, I, I wonder if people call him a fucking uh, Putin apologist or whatever for this stuff. I know what it's like to be wrong. I was one of those genius privates that got married right before I deployed. In order to answer <laughs> whether Putin can win Dude, or not, I love this guy. What the fuck? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, dude. Oh no. Jody came for him. You just need to act like you're a vet. What do you mean? We need to look at his stated conditions for victory. If Russia is able to negotiate to hold on to parts of eastern Ukraine, it will likely be worth it for him in the long term. Now, there are some people that want us to believe that the US orchestrated some coup in 2014 in Ukraine, but I refuse to believe that the same US government that couldn't stand up the Afghan army after $2 trillion in 20 years. After the fiasco in- Okay, that's, that's a little different. These are two separate branches, okay? US soft power, diplomacy, and statecraft uh, or is is entirely separate than than you know uh, the the military division okay let's be let's be fair here uh so that's one and two it doesn't even matter uh because there was legitimate and viable uh, anger justified frustration towards the the Putin puppet like Putin aligned uh leader at the time Does your this special video comments come to YouTube? Wait, what do you mean? When you see that $57.26 was spent at Walgreens at 8.31 a.m. while you're deployed in Afghanistan? Oh, my God. Oh, that's so specific, dude. Oh, that is... Oh, that's devastating. Yeah. Guess you gotta always have a plan B, you know what I'm saying? To get your ass out of Afghanistan. She just wanted fifty-seven dollars worth of chips, dude. That's why she went to Walgreens. In Afghanistan, you can almost forgive Putin for thinking that the US was incapable of standing up the Ukrainian army after only eight years and three billion dollars. That was a miscalculation on Russia. You pay $57 for plan B. What the fuck is 10 bucks in Turkey? All right, motherfucker. Well, you know, why? Well, okay. Yeah, we don't welcome to the United States of America, okay, where this, everything is incredibly expensive, especially when it comes to health care. Also, 10 bucks in Turkey is like, a million Turkish lira, so chill. Ne diyor bu ejnebi Amerikalı piş? Senin anne ne diyorum? Ejnebi Amerikalı pişti ya. Geri zekalı. Sanki bilmiyorum Türkçe konuşmayı. Türkçe konuşmayı okumayı. Ne yapıyorsun lan? Komünist Hasan. Lan komünist Hasan. Ne yapıyorsun? Kek W. Adamların derdine bak. Ne kadar Putinci varsa. Ne anlatıyor bu Amerikalılar? Anyway deyip durumu. AK. <gülüyor> Komünist. Amına koyayım bu çat niye bu kadar çok hızlı? Saçları üçe vur. Dude, this...
Russia's part. The lesson here is no one can force a people to do something that they don't already really want to do on a deep level. We can't just take the agency away from millions of people in Ukraine and the average soldiers on the ground there who are clearly dead set on democracy and fighting Putin to the very last man. You can't just create that out of thin air. But the idea that the US is some kind of puppet master pulling the strings is to give us too much credit. It's nice of you to say, and it's flattering. I wish we could take credit, but the evidence just isn't there. But to be fair, Putin definitely has historical justification for being paranoid about the CIA trying to meddle in Ukraine. I believe Zelensky is the right leader in Ukraine, and there's clearly- Whoa, what? Wait, did he just say that? Definitely has his- Take credit, but the evidence just isn't there. But to be fair, Putin definitely has historical justification for being paranoid about the CIA trying to meddle in Ukraine. Yo, what? Dude, this dude's awesome. What the fuck? This guy completely wrong? Yeah, totally, dude. Totally. America would never do that and never has done that and never will continue to do that. That's crazy. Wow, this dude's awesome. I believe Zelensky is the right leader in Ukraine, and there's clearly a direct causal connection between his bravery and the NATO countries finding their own balls and deciding to use these unprecedented financial sanctions against Russia. But we can't ignore that there is a dark side to these financial sanctions that no one seems willing to talk about. If you mention how drastic these sanctions are, I see how much your takes are the same as RT's. Like what? Why are we watching RT? Dude, you are so fucking stupid, dude. Oh my god, we should let Ukraine into NATO. Yeah, we should. NATO should bomb the fuck out of Russia's invasion forces. Bro, that's awesome. That is, dude, you are such a fucking idiot, dude. Hey, how about just nuke you and your family individually? Okay. Also, this isn't even fucking uh, Russia Today, dumbass. This is an American fucking vet talking about Russia's military chances. How about only you? How about we nuke you and your fucking family? How about that? Just that. Just you. Okay? I, for one, think it's uh, inappropriate to just <laughs> decide to nuke the rest of the fucking uh, planet, you know? I'm not, I'm not a fan of that, I think. I'm not a fan of that bargain, that gamble that you are so willingly uh, able to do. He wasn't even asking for nukes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. This is asking, nay, demanding nuclear war. You do not have the mental faculties to comprehend this for some weird fucking reason, okay? There is a reason why Brandon and all these other fucking NATO countries are not sending in nato troops into ukraine what the fuck are you talking about why do you think that they're not doing that can you imagine a world in which like even the american administration the american foreign policy apparatus in its entirety is anti-nato involvement but dumbass random chatters are like yeah let's do it yeah, yeah brother let's go let's go Also, it's not Russia today that we're watching, you fucking dummy. We're watching, just please, for a second. Yeah, task and purpose, known Russian propaganda. Like, you, you, you're losing the libs. You're losing liberals in the chat. You'll seem sympathetic to Russia. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow and your money, your life savings was worth 30% less. That's what happened to your average Russian citizen. By removing Russia from the SWIFT payment system, we've crippled their economy, and now I hear US officials calling for us to cut off purchases of Russian oil. Sure, that's understandable. We want to strike back. We want to punish Russia for the carnage in Ukraine. The problem is that we might be unknowingly clapping and cheering our way straight into World War III with these sanctions. The West is gambling that these sanctions might cause Putin to give up or a revolution by the regular Russian people. A lot of people are not aware that prior to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, prior to World War II, the US government cut off oil supplies to Japan. Japan's army was left in a situation where they had enough gas for about a year and a half. 
the Japanese Empire did a cost-benefit analysis and they determined that their best course of action was to bomb the US in response to hope to get them to send them oil again. On the other hand, I understand NATO has no real other option here. Fate is dragging us in a scary direction. What's becoming clear is that this war will have far-reaching consequences that will affect all of us around the globe this is awesome. and it might take a month to start feeling those negative financial effects. The American I was wrong, dude. When he said he was army infantry, I thought he was a boot, like straight up. And I was wrong. His first video was pretty good. But then uh, this video is just like showing that he is not like the most boot take usually is just like they hate us because they ain't us, brother. They hate us because they l hate our freedoms. Like, I, I think he's not like that at all. I mean, he, he definitely boots it up when he's like doing tactical, like soy face war shit. But other than that, he's I mean, it's pretty good. His, his analysis is really good. Mike Preisner, I mean, dude, there's plenty of fucking vets that I, uh, that are in this community whom I love. Okay. That's not, I'm not like, uh, I'm not like immediately anti fucking everyone that's served. That's crazy. I've, I literally have Peggy on too. He's, he's a fucking vet. American people got lucky, and the majority of citizens didn't really have to sacrifice at all during the Iraq and Afghanistan war. The idea must seem alien to most US citizens. Putin might be betting that we do not have any resolve or ability to suffer because of rising prices due to this conflict. I think if that's his bet, then he's in for another surprise. I've included links to all of my research in the description. If you're interested in viewing a copy of my Google- My mistake, I thought I saw RT logo on the video, I was wrong. Okay, it's nice of you to admit that you're wrong, but just like remember that, uh, you know, you're being incredibly horny to fucking disprove. And also, the take that you're most wrong about is not the Russia Today one, but specifically the one where you are, um, you know, advocating to bomb, bomb uh, Russian forces with NATO troops or NATO uh, Air Force, uh, NATO nation uh, uh, air support. Okay. Well, the video's done. What do you mean stop stun locking? Google Doc scripts and my own open source intelligence. I like this dude. Um, Azan can't resist a man in uniform. Yes. Do you agree with Pentagon that we should not accept Poland's MiG 29s and then give those to Ukraine? I don't know what the fuck uh, Russia's response will be if that's the case. I do fear that Russia will see that as a provocation.